Yeah, so today I thought we'd talk about, I don't know, maybe gold? <laughs> All right, so welcome back. I've been seeing sources calling for another drop in gold prices next week. I think a lot of that's being played up because it's getting views, quite honestly. But a lot of people are wondering what the longer term prices are going to look like. So I thought I'd weigh in on the topic, but maybe not entirely in the way that the question keeps coming up. Now, one of those sources was Kitco, and you might have seen something on Salivate Metal, but Kitco has an article mentioning the risk of another $100 drop in spot price for gold next week. Now, Personally, I expect it to be back in the 1800s next week rather than falling to the 1700s, but like I said in my last video, trading just doesn't seem to be following any logic right now. The thing I do know, though, is that in the grand scheme of things, a few weeks of volatility really doesn't matter, and even longer-lasting corrections won't have a huge impact if you're holding long-term. Now, what I've found personally with both gold and silver is that I can buy the metals and then not have to worry at all about spot price for long periods of time. That's kind of why I like them. There's really no likely scenario where the prices will fall so far that I'm going to be left holding the bag, as they say. Because as much as people like to use clickbait titles about metals, particularly silver crashing or surging, they really don't do either one of those things. And I get that saying it like that might make it seem like accumulating gold or silver can be pretty boring, really, but that limitation on just how high or just how low it might go is actually a very positive thing. Now, when I started buying 12 years ago, I saw very wild jumps. I saw the wildest jumps in price in 2011, and I guess again last year in 2020, and I also saw the down years in between. And... None of that volatility over more than a decade of buying has affected me so significantly that I wish that I could go back and buy a lot more or sell it all. So what I expect to see for the future of gold and silver is really more of what we've seen so far. I tend to think about what I have in terms of accumulated weight rather than how much I'm up or down versus my cost basis at any given time. Now, the reason the question of where metals are going is so pervasive right now is that it just feels like prices should be shooting up when they're actually going down. And then on top of that, I think a lot of people really had that idea, really, really felt strongly that we could all affect the price directly after seeing it happen with GameStop. But we got a pretty good example of how really the only people able to affect the price right now are the dealers with their premiums. And that's not me just trying to be cynical. That's just my view after 12 years of watching metals do what they do. Now, if you're newer to it, I think that whole view of gold and silver being a smart buy because of its potential massive upside, it's easy to get caught up in when people start beating the drum of silver to the moon or gold to $10,000 or whatever. Now, the value of either metal is more about limiting your exposure to financial collapse or just some kind of big crash. And I've personally become more interested in gold, mostly because the amount of value that it's able to store. And I don't think there will ever be a time when bartering for silver is realistic, so it's just easier to store it in gold. But I've been at this for more than a decade, and like I've said before, metal holdings tend to accumulate pretty fast if you stay consistent with your purchases. Now, the entire time that I've been buying, I've never really felt the need to buy more than an ounce or two of gold in a single transaction. So I don't feel like I've ever had a particularly painful purchase. And far and away, my most common purchase has been the one quarter ounce American Gold Eagles. Now, that's an important thing to me when I look back at my buying because I've been able to fill tubes of full one ounce Eagles without ever making huge purchases at any given time. I've bought those quarter ounce coins and then swapped them for one ounce eagles along the way. And you can argue the logic of paying a higher premium for fractional coins and then giving it away to the dealer when you swap for those one ounce coins. But again, I've just never had a particularly painful purchase. And I've never worried too much about swings and spot price because of it. So if I had any advice to give, it would probably be to set up systems that let you get on that schedule or that routine of good behavior. If you like me, you can even game yourself to get there. Now, I wanted one ounce coins when I got started, but really I couldn't afford them. So I put together a plan to get there without giving up important things like cash savings, other investments, or, you know, like paying bills. <laughs> 
because these aren't cheap and buying every single month required a couple things. First, I had to spend less on other things and then second, I had to make more to cover them. And when I got started, I was able to figure that out for a quarter ounce coin, but I wasn't able to figure out how to do it for a full one ounce purchase. Now, I'm sure some of the people watching this, well, you just have the funds available to make those purchases without a whole lot of decision-making process going into it. But the rest of us kind of have to figure something out to do it. And that whole idea of finding that money is a giant topic that we're just barely going to touch on here. But for me, I knew that if I wanted to collect this stuff, I needed to work harder. And it became a little bit of a motivation for me. So earlier when I mentioned that I, I, I game myself or I game the system that I used to buy the gold, well, in the most not cheesy way that I can think of to explain this, I figure out how to make the money to get it. And it becomes a little bit like a reward for figuring it out, this gold does. So when I started out, I found that I was able to not spend about $150 a month, basically stuff that I was already spending on that I didn't need. And then I was able to figure out some things after hours that added that other $250 with, really without too much effort. So don't worry, I'm, I'm not inviting you into a pyramid scheme here. For me, I was able to do it through work. And over time, I was able to do more and more of it. And I was able to layer in other investments. So as some of those other investments started to pay off or you know, continue to pay off, then I actually have a little bit more. I'm able to put that back into the system as well. Maybe buy more gold, maybe try other things. And then back on that idea of buying metals because of a possible massive upside, well, I don't see it that way. I actually see gold as the end result, the end rewards, rather than as an investment with some larger outcome. Now, one of the recent videos I, I showed a watch, a similar situation. I wanted that thing, so I made a simple goal, you know, do X and then you can buy the watch. And in, in no way whatsoever was buying that watch a smart purchase, but I was super motivated to get it. I didn't simply buy the watch with the cash that I already had, I found another way. I held up a liquor store. <laughs> it was actually a simple business or work deal, however, whatever you want to call it. But it was above and beyond what I was already relying on, so I had to work a little bit harder to get it. I try to operate that way with gold and a few other investments as well, and, and even these knives that show up in the videos now and then, well, I, I use the same kind of system for that too. There's something I want, figure out a way to do a little bit more to get them. And if you have the flexibility to operate like that, you can figure out a way to get something by some mix of spending less and making more, and then apply that amount to buying gold, well, the spot price becomes a lot less relevant. But on that original topic, I actually think the spot prices will go up in the short term. I mean, I could be wrong. <laughs> I think they'll drop with any semblance of economic recovery this year. And then I think they'll climb again as we start to deal with the massive government spending that's keeping things feeling a little more normal right now. I could be wrong on all that as well, but because I work to figure out ways to work these purchases in without wrecking myself in other ways, I don't feel that there is a downside. I'm also confident that over time gold won't lose value. So it's a particularly good place to sock away some of that reward money. Certainly better than a watch or a knife, but I'm going to continue picking up some of those things as well. I'm a little bit of a small time knife collector and sometimes working toward a new knife rather than something responsible like gold or retirement savings is a little bit more exciting. This is a Chris Reeve Sabenza, by the way. Wanted a large Sabenza for years, so when the new 31s came out, I made another plan. Made a specific investment, probably really doesn't matter what it was, I guess. It was cryptocurrency. And when I hit a certain point, I cashed out and I used some of that money to buy the knife. So I'm kind of proud of this knife where had I just put it on the credit card or pulled it out of the savings, well, it would have had a different feeling considering how expensive these things are. And that's different than gold. I've never seen gold as being an expensive hobby since I can easily liquidate it all and get back anything that I've ever put into it. Knives are a little more expensive, maybe, but <laughs> I, I guess I can find ways to cover them, too. Now, I do get a lot of questions on the knives, by the way, and I'm planning to drop a video that either goes behind the scenes and explains why I have all this other stuff in frame, 
or maybe drop a video now and then on some of the other things that I really like. I would, I would love to cover these knives a bit now and then. I just, I'm trying to get a gauge on whether that would be interesting on this channel. Might need to stay completely separate, I, I don't know. One more thing, I don't know for sure. Let me know in the comments, are you interested in some of those other things? Are you interested in knives? What do you think about the price of gold? Is it going up? You want me to put this pen on a stacking Stormtrooper auction? <laughs> Let me know. I'm going to have a link in the description to the Discord server too if you'd like to see a bit more on any of those topics. But regardless of all of that, I hope you're well. Thank you again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.